Hey guys, I still have some more projects to show you from the project booklet, but before I do that, I wanted to show you this cute owl punch and how that works. If you need this punch, it's available right now on my website. I'll also be featuring it at my Croptoberfest event, which is in Centerville on September 15th and 16th this year. I'd love to have you join us in person if you are in this area, or if you're not, please feel free to contact me and follow along, maybe to join some events later. So this is the Owl Build-A-Punch, and it punches out the big owl body, and then one each of the small pieces. So a wing, the two different pieces for the eye and the beak. And then because you need double of eyes and wings, you'll actually need to punch out a second set of those pieces when you're putting together your owls. I have some scraps from my project recipe. So if you watched my video putting that together, you'll remember that I had quite a bit of scraps left over just based on the way that I cut to save some paper. And we're gonna start punching some owls from this brown plaid, which is stripes on the back. So the punch goes in, you can line it up however you like. You can, if you're trying to get a lot out of your paper, you might wanna look from this direction and make sure you're um, matching it up with any blank spaces you already have. But one punch will punch out an owl body, one wing, and one of each of the eye pieces, these will get layered together, and one beak. So you need a duplicate of your wing and eye pieces. Um, you, I would say in the other direction with your paper. If you're using a cardstock, the direction doesn't matter, but when you have a decorative paper, you wanna probably make sure you're getting that same pattern on the wing that's gonna go in the other direction. Let me show you what I mean. So this is just a little scrap, some scraps, that'll go in the trash. The wing on the punch has a specific orientation and you don't have to use it in one on one side or the other of your owl, but what you will see is, and I'll get some contrasting paper so you can see this better. If you were to just punch on the same side of the paper, both times, you would get two wings that are oriented the same direction. And you probably don't want that when you're putting together an owl, you want one wing that goes each direction. And you can put your wings so he's pointing them out, or the other direction so the wings are pointing in and kind of tucked. And other angles too, sure, however you want. Anyway, those little wing pieces are flexible depending on how you want to put your owl together but you do probably want two that look the same but that face the opposite directions with the little eyes it doesn't matter as much so what we're going to do is just punch out a bunch of eye pieces and then we'll mix and match the ones together that we want to have um, go together for the owl eyes if you have some very small scraps you can still punch out some of these shapes, but some of your scraps are gonna to be too small for some of, your, um, some of your pieces that you need. Let's punch out a few more. I've got some of this navy cardstock left over from when we gutted some photo mats, so we can definitely punch out some navy pieces. And with the cardstock, the direction of the wings is not gonna matter since there's not a certain like color or pattern on one side or the other of the paper. Nope, that one I didn't cut very well. You might want to aim your uh, punch pieces so you get certain colors, like um, the smaller part of the owl eye. I think, personally, feel like it looks better if it's darker than the larger parts, but you don't have to do it that way. Whatever looks good to you, whatever you like, is just fine. Owls can be any color in this world of paper crafting. And any of the pieces can be any color you want to make them. So 
I'll just punch out a few, a few more from the navy, and then I'll grab one more sheet of paper. I'm actually gonna punch some white pieces from the leftover white cardstock that we had in the project recipe. So we've got some with a pattern, a little bit of this brown plaid, and maybe we'll punch some more of those. Um, this piece is going to be too small for an owl body, but it's just fine for his wings and eyes and beak. And you, like I said before, you might want to have some lighter colored pieces like this so you can punch out these larger eye sections. It's just up to you. So whichever pieces you want of whichever colors and patterns of paper, you can get as picky as you want about um, punching the particular shapes for building your owls. And then let, let's look at how these pieces go together. So you'll have an owl body for each one. And if you want to just use the owl body by itself, you definitely can. It's a cute shape on its own. You do not have to piece together an owl. This is what I would do is put my two wings on just under his neck, kind of where that neck meets. Let me since the table is so dark, I'm gonna move my little navy blue owls so you can see them a little better. So we've got some navy blue owl bodies. I've got some brown wings over here and I've got a brown owl body I'll put some navy wings on him over here if I can pick those up <laughs> and maybe this one in the middle can get some white wings And then depending on what colors you've punched from or what papers, you have a bunch of different combinations that could go together. And you might want your light colored, larger eye pieces in there with a darker colored, um, small piece from the eye. Let's see, I, maybe let's do navy for that one. So that's kind of how that looks. And I have one recommendation about the eyes. <laughs> I would suggest that you glue your two eye pieces together before you glue onto your owl body because then you can kind of decide what direction you want your eyes to go. If you're trying to piece them on and glue them down at the same time, it's a little hard to get your pupils going the same direction. And then your owl ends up looking maybe a little funny. Do you have to do it that way? No. That's just what I felt like was working better for me. So these two pieces that were cut out from the, um, th that are coming from the striped side of this paper end up not being a very good match for each other. So I probably wouldn't use those two pieces together. You could, no reason you can't. Um, I just would probably be more likely to look for something matching to try to punch out some pieces that are going to be more similar so they can use those together with them. And so here we've got some light kind of inner eye pupil whatever pieces 
on some darker ones. That's not my favorite look, but I think it still works just fine. I just personally prefer the lighter ones, whether it's a pattern or a solid with uh, something a little darker in the center. And you can see I kind of nicked this one on the edge, but if I put my second eyepiece down kind of lower, I should be able to cover that up. And then each owl gets a beak as well. And if you're punching out owls from a lot of your different card stocks and papers from the Croptoberfest kit, you'll have even more options than this. So let's just put together one of these guys, maybe this one on the end. And I think the pre precision point adhesive is the best for something like this. You have a little more control over exactly where your adhesive goes. It holds things down pretty firmly, so it's a little more, a little more permanent, a little faster of a of a um, an adhesion, I guess, compared to the repositionable tape runner. Um, the drawbacks of the precision point adhesive, I feel like it, one, your, your wet adhesive, like the precision point, if you use too much, can seep out and leave kind of a less attractive, shiny spot next to your pieces that you're gluing. Um, and it can also make your pieces warp if you're using too much of the adhesive. So less is more, or at least less is safer with the precision point adhesive. Just takes a little bit. And then as far as placement of the wings, I've been using the skinniest part of the neck as one, one point of reference for the top of my wing. And then on the back, I just bring my wing in far enough that it's covering up everything from the front. Um, so you can't see more of the tan brown color on the outside, um, but that it's tucked in about as far as it can go. So that's just how I've been placing mine. And you don't have to do yours the same way. If you like an owl with a more flared out wing, like it's getting ready to fly or just landing, you can do that as well. Oh, I picked up an extra, leak, uh, an extra wing. So I put my two eyes together. I've got them kind of pointing in a specific direction. I'll have this guy looking kind of up. I feel like it is easier to get your eyes going in a similar direction if the eye pieces are put together before they're on the owl. And the last thing is his, is his beak, which is really tiny. And so it just needs just a tiny, tiny dot of adhesive. You could also try to put these together with the mini adhesive, the mini tape runner refill. I feel like that would be pretty difficult, but the pieces on that tape runner are small enough to work with these, these little pieces for this owl. So that's kind of what the owl will look like. And then I could put together these other ones in a similar way or give them some different angles for their wings. You can even reverse the direction if you want them to be pointing out even more. You can have their eyes look up and down and all around whichever direction you like. And you can use any of your Croftoberfest papers or really any papers, whatever you want for putting together the variety of owls that you want for your projects. So hopefully you enjoy that punch. I think it's really fun. I'm gonna have everybody try it at my Croftoberfest and I have had a number of pre-orders for this one already. 
So people who have pre-ordered it will be receiving it at Croptoberfest, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the fun projects everybody does with this cute owl punch.